Every day throughout the country, thousands of people take the interview hot seat. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? A nerve-wracking experience which only the toughest survive. What's the will to live? Business psychologist Dr. Rob Young claims he can turn even the most tongue-tied interviewee into a top-class candidate. You have to perform. Rob will watch three real candidates going for one real job. This is just going from really bad to completely dreadful. Which one of these hopefuls will fail so spectacularly that they qualify for Rob's extreme brand of interview training? Bag loads of energy, absolutely whopping ginormous bucket load. OK, so give me an example of when you worked in a team. Come on, you've got to get in there, more energy, because if you hesitate, then you're lost. To make it in the glamorous world of show business requires almost superhuman determination. Buchanan Associates is an entertainment agency working in film, TV and theatre, and they're looking for a new personal assistant. The job may be at the bottom rung of the ladder, but competition is tough. Adding to the challenge, the winning candidate will have to impress not one, but two potential bosses. One is a casting director who places actors in productions and the other is an entertainment agent who looks after creative talent like directors and choreographers. Neither of them is going to be a pushover. Our ideal candidate, I think, would be somebody who has great tact and diplomacy, who has a good sense of humour, who has resilience, and also who has the dedication to want to work very, very hard. It's the day of the interview, and while the interviewers are looking for the best candidate, Rob's going to be listening in to find the worst. It's time for candidate number one. So if I'm Bronnie Buchanan, just in case you haven't noticed. Cool. How are you? You all right? I'm very well. Nice to meet you. I'll never be able to remember. How do you say your name again? Bronica? It's Bronya. 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 Learn the name of the interview. It's her company, so get her name right. You obviously handle stress and strain. I right. think so, yeah. yeah. And you enjoy it. You've got a positive attitude. Yeah, I'm quite an enthusiastic person. Yes, he is an enthusiastic person, but he just needs to calm down. Less of the jazz hands. Do you want to talk a little bit about your requirements? Yeah, my, I'm the easy one out of the two of us, really, to be honest. I thought so, no, I'm only <laughs> <laughs> This candidate is definitely becoming too over-familiar, too casual. I think there's a line, and boy, has he crossed it. You don't have an age, do you have an age period there? No, I don't, know. Right, so no. if we were to say to you, could you start? What's he doing? Don't get your own drinks out. This isn't a picnic, for heaven's sakes. So whether I get this job or not, I hopefully see you around, definitely. I'm, I'm Shoes sure. in at the parties. Schmoozing at the parties. <laughs> I never do that. OK, darling, All right, it's lovely really to meet you. nice to meet you. Nice okay. to meet you. See ya. That felt like it went on forever. He exhausted me. <laughs> Please take a seat. Thank you. Next up is candidate number two. Could you tell us what you think is attractive about the position here? I look at your website and, you know, I'm, I'm enjoy theatre and I thought, you know, this is like an area I'd like to work in. Especially in show business, there is so much competition for jobs. Anything you can do to win brownie points is great. So do your research, look at their website, find out the names of the interviewers. Would you be kind enough to tell me what your ultimate career goal is at this point in time? In like five years or something like that, I'd like to be working in arts administration or if I was in this job and helps develop, maybe working as an agent or something like that. But just generally still being involved in some capacity and using the skills I already have. This candidate is answering the questions very well. He's cool, calm, collected, thought about his responses, so he's doing a very good job. Do you have any questions for us? Um, I was going to say, what do you think are the best and worst things about working for your company? What a stonking question. Really thoughtful, because that's the way that you will learn, you know, whether you will fit in that environment or not. Finally, it's time for candidate number three. Could you tell me what your ultimate goal is? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Within, obviously, within the media and arts industry, um, kind of knowing a lot more the area I want or the, the kind of line I want to go down. You don't see yourself in a specific role at this point no, in not, time? No, not at this point. Or in a specific genre? No. That's such a bad thing to admit, saying that you've got no focus. You've got to say that you have a direction in your life. Could you tell me about a situation where a situation that you've been in, where you've had to employ a great deal of tact and diplomacy? I had this one customer, um, he had all these kids beside him and uh, they were all kind of shouting out demands 
This candidate's making terrible eye contact. The rules of eye contact are that when someone is talking, you look at them 80% of the time, and when you're talking, you look at them at least 50% of the time. Here, she's making eye contact less than 30% of the time. Um, the drinks were running out. Um... <sighs> I'm afraid to say that the interviewers really look bored. They're not even feigning enthusiasm now. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, as there's no sweets left, I'll, I'll grab you some pick and mix. And I'm sure like, my manager won't mind. An interview is a performance. You have to use your body language. You have to be exuberant and perform. If this were a West End show, I'd want my money back for my ticket. Decision time for the interviewers. Despite his enthusiasm, the first candidate was a little too informal. So it was candidate number two who landed the job. But one person stood out for all the wrong reasons. 23-year-old Claire Ellis. Her interview today was lacking in energy. I lost the will to live. As there's no sweets left, I'll, I'll grab you some pick and mix. I did find myself drifting ever so slightly and uh, thinking about my lunch. I think they... They were pretty impressed, uh, hopefully. Uh, came, I think I came across all right and pretty confident. So hopefully all goes well and I'll hear, maybe be here on Monday. <laughs> I think her chances of getting her, her dream job on what we saw today isn't going to happen at the moment. But Rob believes he can improve Claire's chances. He claims that he can turn her from an interview wallflower into a dynamic candidate in just three days, but only if she has the courage to face up to some hard truths and make some major changes. Why don't we have a look at how okay. that went, OK? I asked her a question about what she would hope to gain, um, what skills she would hope to gain by working with us, and she said to be more confident in herself. I need her to be confident now. I think that in the interview, she came across as not wanting to say boo to a goose. I think if she's too timid, um, she, she wouldn't be able to, to deal with it. It would have been better if she had been more succinct. All of her answers took three to four minutes, rather than answer the question, deal with it, move on. Um, and I also think that reflects how she would deal with work generally. So, I mean, that's quite tough feedback. How does that make you feel? I just, I think I just got so nervous and the way that she was lo looking right at me the whole time and um, just kept asking all these questions that I was just like, oh, what do I answer first? How do I answer it? And just, it was just jamming in my brain and not coming out. Yeah, <laughs> So because I don't think that they've pulled their punches. They've, they've, you know, KO'd you, knocked you down to the floor, but mm. it's my job to hopefully pick up the pieces. There are three areas that Claire needs to work on if she's to land her dream job. She needs to stop waffling and start giving punchy answers, to lose her timid manner and start making an impact, and she needs to work on her boring voice. With a good degree in film and drama, Claire Ellis has all the right credentials for a job in the entertainment industry. But she's finding it hard to get a break, and she's moved back home with her parents while she looks for work. I think reality hit, really. Kind of coming out of the, the, the student world and all that kind of stuff and realising that I have been to university, but, like everybody else, I've got to start right at the bottom. She's now been job hunting for seven months. Claire's getting frustrated because she's tried several interviews and still there's nothing coming back. So it is quite hard for her, especially as she's worked so hard getting the degree that she's worked for and then going out there and finding that nobody wants to employ her because she hasn't got enough experience. But obviously she can't get the experience until somebody decides to employ her. Working in a bar brings in some money, but it's not what Claire really wants to do, and the endless failed job interviews are beginning to get her down. She's always like dressing up very nice, and before the interview she's confident, but sometimes she gets nervous, and she wants to do it, And but when she comes back she's a bit disappointed and always feeling under the under the weather. Over the next three days, Rob will have to pull out all the stops to turn Claire into a credible interview candidate. What are your weaknesses? Weaknesses are... But he'll have his work cut out. <laughs> it smells and they're boys and they're boxing and they're like, raw. And there's no guarantee of success. How, how are you feeling? Crap. OK, smile, you can do this, yeah? It's day one. 
Rob believes that in an interview, no answer should last any longer than 30 seconds. Claire bored her interviewers to tears with her long-winded anecdotes. If she's to stand any chance of getting a job, she'll have to learn to sharpen up and come up with a relevant answer, no matter how much pressure she's under. So Rob's brought her somewhere where she could easily slip up. In case you haven't guessed, we're going to be ice skating today. Now, remember, one of the things that we're going to be working on is thinking on your feet. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Literally, exactly. <laughs> so you've got to be thinking on your feet to answer interview questions. Okay. Because how would you rate the interviewer's interviewing style? Um, what do you mean? How, how did you find their style of interviewing? How did you find them? Quite aggressive. OK, so I'm going to be quite aggressive with you today, I'm afraid. Okay. I need to be quite tough with you because there are interviewers like that who can be a bit in your face. So you've got to think on your feet, deal with quite aggressive, punchy questions, and you've just got to deal with them. And not fall on my face. Exactly. Yeah. Claire hasn't skated for eight years, a fact which former ice dancer Rob is going to use to pile on the pressure. I'm going to skate around you and then whenever I come up to you, I'm going to be in your face with an interview question and I want you to respond. Just start skating. OK. So, where do you want to be in five years? <laughs> I hate that question. <laughs> Sorry, that's that going to what, is that going to be what you say in the interview? No, not at all. OK, come on then. Give me an example of when you worked in a team. <laughs> come on, quickly. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. You are certainly trying. I know trying my patience as an interviewer. So, teamwork. You've not worked in any teams? Yes, I've worked in plenty of teams. Well, tell me about one. So, what are your weaknesses? Weaknesses are... <laughs> Claire. Go away! Go away! Leave me alone! Sorry, I thought you were okay. It's all right to get angry. Oh, Claire, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's so hard. Am I being any tougher than the interviewers in that interview? It just feels as though you're attacking me personally. I know you're not. I know you're trying to help. Okay, just take a breath. You can do this, okay? Oh. Can you just give me a minute? Okay. Please. First question I'm going to ask you is about your strengths, OK? So, when I come up towards you... So, what do you say your strengths are? My strengths are I'm a happy, outgoing person. I get on with a lot of people, even strangers and people I don't know. And um, I'm calm under pressure and like socialising with people. OK. Next time, say it with a smile. OK. What would you say your weaknesses are? My weaknesses, I tend to be a bit overcautious sometimes, but then I use my initiative when I know what I'm doing. Brilliant. This is more like the Claire I expected to see. So, tell me about a work situation you've been in where you've had to be organised and prioritised. OK, working in a busy bar, lots of customers, uh, orders shouting at me, prioritising uh, what drinks to make, who to serve and what manager to talk to. And remember the result. What result did you get? Uh, the customers were happy, the, uh, they got their food on time and we made a lot of profit that day. Profit, always a good thing to mention. Rob is beginning to get the measure of Claire, and it seems that she is more afraid of confrontation than he realised. She just lost it. And I have to say, I was no tougher on her than the interview that she had. She just got to toughen up, because they said that they were losing the will to live. They were thinking about their lunch. She was boring them. And she's got to be tougher. Think on her feet better than that. Claire may now be more confident in what she's saying, but it's no good having the perfect answer if no one will listen to it. It's time to work on her monotone voice. 28. Two and eight. 28. Claire's about to make her showbiz debut. Eight and six. 86. 28. 
So you're probably wondering why I brought you to a bingo hall, and if you haven't guessed already, we're going to work on your voice, because one of the things the interviewer said was that you needed to hold their attention more, and you do that by using pace and intonation and inflection. So you're going to run a bingo session, you're going to call the numbers, because it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's infusing them with passion. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm a bit nervous about it, but uh, I'll give it a go. <laughs> OK, wh why do you feel nervous? Uh, just in front of people that I don't know, um, and my voice, really. But the whole thing with interviews is that you are meeting strangers. You are meeting people that you've never met before, and it's really important to be able to just click in instantly and to inflect and intonate and be interesting with your voice. So I'd like you to meet our resident bingo expert, Mike. Master bingo caller Michael Smith has been in the business for 20 years. He sees it as something of an art. It's like you've got an imaginary fishing line with your voice and you can see these people wriggling about and you're going to make them stop. And the reason why you make them stop is you go... 59. 5 and 9. 59. You reject that voice. If the first part of that number, you double number the start. So, looking for any one line, still people talking. 59. 5 and 9. 59. You say it so everyone in the whole hall will listen. I go, oh, he said it. Stop talking, love. Put that sweet away, go on. And they listen for the next number. Michael's expecting a big turnout, and with over £2,000 to be won tonight, Claire can't afford to make any mistakes. How, how are you feeling? Crap. You can do this. All, all I want you to do is just to call out the numbers. Yeah. Think, you know, you're going to sing Gloria yeah. Gain, I Will Survive, okay. but don't and then you've just got to be sing-song with your voice. Yeah. She has to inject inflection and tone into her voice. If she doesn't, then she's going to bore the pants off interviewers. And, yeah, I'm worried for her, to be honest. I'm going to hand you over to Claire. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good, good. 2, 4, 24. 86, 86, 86. 76, 76. 49, 49, 49. 52, 52. 1. By itself, number one. By itself, number one. 75, 75, 75. 46, 46, 46. Five and one, fifty-one. On fifty-one. On fifty-one. Oh, the full house. Full house. It's good. It's good. One winner. And that's it for your early session. Okay, let's see. Thank you very much, guys. How do you feel now? A lot better than I did before. <laughs> before doing it, yeah. The thing is, your voice is great because you're okay. using real inflection and when you go into an interview now, you can be, you know, a bit more sing-song because your voice okay. otherwise will be a little bit flat. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Brilliant. Rob decides not to dent Claire's fragile confidence by telling her what the regulars really thought. I couldn't um, listen to her all night. She'd drive me up the wall, to be honest. Oh, the number, she didn't call them out right, darling. I mean, someone could have missed her hell. Well, she was calling the next number out, right? Yeah. She could have done. At the end of day one, there's clearly a long way to go before Claire's showbiz career takes off. Didn't really like Rob today, but I know he's only trying to help me. So, I'm feeling a bit run down today. It's day two of Rob's interview training. 48 hours ago, Claire Ellis bombed in an interview at an entertainment agency. She was so overwhelmed by our interviewers that she couldn't even look them in the eye. Rob knows if she is ever to get a job in the cutthroat world of show business, she must learn to make an impact and force people to listen to her, no matter how intimidated she may feel. Look in there. These Sweaty are. boys, nice. Yep, two dozen burly boxers. They're doing a training session in about five minutes time. Guess who's gonna be running the training session? Me! Exactly. So you've gotta be in complete control, tell them what they're doing, be confident, use your voice, energy, because they've gotta respect you, okay? Yeah. 
You up for it? How do you feel? Uh, don't know really. They're sweaty boys. Okay. And they're boys and they're boxing and they're like, raw. I'll be alright. Yeah, I mean, you're only going to be in there for a little while. Okay. Just it's take just control. really, it just looks really full on, that's all. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> it, it, it is full on. Yeah. Okay, so get back in there. Go on. Boxing coach Sid Khan has been running these sessions for 20 years and won't accept any slackers in his class. Today, Claire's going to step into his shoes. Last set! Let you walk around. Don't be shy, so um, just give him a bit of pep talk. Come on, let's work. Don't drop your hands, move your feet. Time, let's go. No, come on. Sharp, Lugie, sharp, sharp, sharp. Keep an eye on him. He's, he's slagging. How you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. OK, come on, you've got to get in there. More energy, because if you hesitate, then you're lost. Because these are boxers, they're not going to respect some, you know, mere girl in here. Okay. We get aggressive, insult their ego, insult their pride. You know, bits, bits, aggression at them. Get them to work hard. Okay? Yeah, come on. Yes. 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 Come on, keep going, Essie. Come on, really hit it now. Get in there. One, two. Keep your hands up. That's it, Colin. Keep your hands up. Come on. Okay, keep your hands. really good. This is about making an impact on the gym. That's good. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, more, more aggressive. More yeah, that's the whole yeah. point, you know. You've got to get into an interview. I can see the sweat dripping. Gonna... It's meant, but, yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. You've got to be able to make eye contact, look into the whites of the eyes of the interviewers, <laughs> and give them a one-two, you know, kind of left hook. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, metaphorically, of course. But yeah. that's, that's the whole point, making an impact. Well done. Yeah. Fighting talk, but there's still a long way to go. In less than 24 hours, Rob is planning to put Claire through an interview from hell, with two actors briefed to probe her every weakness. <coughs> Rob knows if she is to have any chance of getting through it, she must go one step further and prove that she can really take control of a situation. So, for her final task, Claire must take charge of a charity event. With a hundred overexcited office workers all rearing to go, it's down to Claire to run the whole show, including a pancake race. You've got to marshal the crowd, look right. after everyone, hand out the prizes. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Good, let's go for it then. Can the girl who wouldn't say boo to a goose make a group of complete strangers toe the line? So when you're announcing the races, you've got to really okay, project your voice, yeah. really be energetic. These people are here to have fun and just take control. Yeah. Because if you're not confident, then they'll just think, oh, who is this person? OK, feet behind the line, please. Come on, come on, all at the same. No, behind the line, that's it, that's great. OK, are you guys ready? On your marks, get set. Ah! Oh! Did I blow my whistle? <laughs> no, Mr Shanty Man. On your marks. Thank you. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hooray! I really enjoyed it. It was a really good laugh with all the pancakes and everyone having such a good time. You're a star. <laughs> Bag loads of energy, absolutely whopping ginormous bucket loads. Okay. And that's exactly what this is about. Because as I suspected, you've got all the energy, you've got the confidence inside. You just need to be able to demonstrate it to interviewers. And if you can do that, then you're going to be Magic Johnson of the interviewing world. <laughs> Rob has now done all that he can, and with just hours to go before she's back in the interview hot seat, Claire goes home to squeeze in some extra practice. 
biggest achievement? Can you give me an example of a time when you have worked in a small team? Can you give me an example of a time where you've been under pressure? Okay, a good one, Nick. It's the morning of the interview, and even Claire's dad is getting nervous. I think it's, it's, it's very important that she does well today because otherwise, after going through all the practice and training that she's had, if the interview does flop, I guess, that, that her competence will go with it. Just three days ago, Claire's performance was so dull that she bored the interviewers to tears. And I went over to the, the pick and mix section. Has the girl who couldn't even look an interviewer in the eye transformed into a dynamic go-getting candidate? Rob has instructed two actors to give Claire the grilling of a lifetime. I've worked on everything with her, her energy, her voice, and thinking on her feet, but I still don't know if she can pull it off. Sometimes she's fantastic, sometimes she falls flat on her face. I've got everything crossed for her, but I still don't know if she can do it. It's time for the interview from hell. Hello. Good afternoon. Claire. Good, she's smiling. I know she's nervous as anything, but she's smiling. This is a good start. Claire, tell me about a time when you've had to use your initiative. Probably working in a bar, it's really, really busy, especially on a Friday night, and you have to prepare during the day, like lunchtime. Her eye contact is so much better. Last time, she was looking slightly just away from the interviewers, but now she's looking them straight in the eye. It was first. And she's and using her hands much more to illustrate points. It's fantastic stuff. Claire, where do you want to be in five years' time? On location or in a studio-based kind of situation as an assistant director? This is a question where she fell down in that first interview and now she's being much more clear, much more articulate about where she wants to go in the future. I really love the entertainment industry and watching films and TV and just being in that environment. Despite the fact these interviews are supposed to be quite tough, quite uncaring, they're actually looking much more engaged just listening to her because despite what they are trying to do, she is warming them up. Claire, why should we hire you? I feel like I'm an energetic, vibrant young person who wants to suck up as much knowledge as possible, um, learn new things, and I feel I can bring new and exciting ideas to your company. This is much better. She's inflecting. She comes across as enthusiastic and credible. Right, good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> that was brilliant. What do yeah. you reckon? I felt a lot more confident and energetic. Do you feel pleased with yourself? Yes, I do. So yes. how, how do you feel you've developed over the course of a couple of days? Oh, I felt as though I was actually in the interview and, you know, making positive statements and kind of being there rather than just sitting back and not really getting into it at all. The future seems a lot brighter than I thought it was going to be and, you know, I'm going to get there very soon now, I think. Just one week after filming ended, Claire got her first job in the entertainment industry as a runner for a TV production company.